You have initially from Mr. Qualls um, a list, two-page list of uh, the six finalists for the first round of interviews. These are just some little notes that he made about that. Uh, and I'll go back to that in just a second. The schedule for the interview, which is in your packet, has the six names listed. The first one is Mr. Jason Newman, and Mr. Newman's resume is in your packet. He is currently serving as the principal at Humboldt Junior Senior High School in Humboldt, Tennessee. And he will be the first candidate interviewed at 4 p.m. The second candidate is Mia Hyde, who is the director, core director of the First Tennessee Regional Office of the State Department of Education. The third candidate interviewed will be Mr. J.T. Stroder. Mr. Stroder is currently serving as the superintendent in Moab, Utah. He has been superintendent in several other districts as well. The fourth candidate, which will be interviewed at 6.30. Now, you'll see there's a little bit long, there's a, just a tiny break between 6.15 and 6.30. Board members only. We are going into the finance office and we're gonna have a little something to tide you over, just some sam simple sandwich, chips, water, something like that. So that's available to you in the finance office. At four, uh, the fourth candidate to be interviewed immediately after the break at 6.30 is Edwin Jarnigan. Edwin is actually the retired superintendent in Granger County Schools, but continues to work with them on a multi-day contract. Has been in that, was in that district for many years. Uh, the fifth candidate to be interviewed at 715 is Mr. Patrick Fraley, the principal at Greenville High School in Greenville, Tennessee. And the last candidate to be interviewed at 8 p.m. is Dr. Tony Kinkle. Dr. Kinkle is currently serving as the executive director of uh, the Minnesota State Board of Administrator, the Minnesota State Board for School Administration. So, on. so there are the six candidates, Jason Newman, Mia Hyde, J.T. Stroder, Edwin Jarnigan, Patrick Fraley, Dr. Tony Kinkle. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a good point. You know, when we get to the final interview, and if they have you know travel and stuff, we might want to consider a stop and uh, yes. if we. Uh, Mr. Paul said that yeah, the norm. The norm was when you have someone that travels a long distance, mm -hmm. for that particular reason, mm -hmm. for the final, we are choosing our superintendent from this small room. It's appropriate to take a stop. Be so if one of those two gentlemen is on this. So then you have Mr. Newman's resume, references listed. I do see two superintendent colleagues that I know on that one. Uh, Miss Hyde's uh, resume, or references are listed. You then have a, a uh, introductory letter from Mr. Stroder. His references and all are listed and he actually has some uh, letters um, included there. Mr. Mr. Jarnigan was kind enough to give us folders and make his own copies. I, I just like to know. <laughs> uh, Mr. Fraley next has um, he, he has an um, introductory letter there, then includes his references, uh, his resume, all of that is for you there. Then lastly, we have Dr. Kinkle's resume with references. Some have introductory letters and some do not. 
um, but that certainly wasn't the requirement that Mr. Cross had. And lastly, uh, this is the survey, the anonymous survey that was completed that basically asks who you are, you know, what your role is as far as a stakeholder in this process, what are the, the five top traits you would like to see in a superintendent, uh, the next superintendent, and then the third question basically dealt with issues that you thought would be most pertinent to Rogersville City School in the next five years. And then there are a number of comments, as I said, and Mr. Uh, Matney alluded to as well, anytime you do an anonymous survey, the, there's good and bad with anonymous surveys. The good is that it's anonymous and it allows people to say what they want to say without any uh, concern. The bad part is it's anonymous and it allows people to say whatever they want to say without any concern. <laughs> so, and there's no opportunity for feedback or to address an issue that might be there because you have no idea where the information came from. So here's what's going to happen uh, as far as uh, procedurally on Thursday. Chairman Matney said if you all could meet for just a minute or two. I mean, one of the things I just want to bring up is as we go through this process, interview is not the only thing that we need to look at. And I was under the impression that we would get a week to take a look at the, the looking at the backgrounds of these individuals, making telephone calls. And I don't know if uh, really two days. Will well, be I think what happened there, Scott, is Mr. Paul's best friend's had to Yes. And he conducted the funeral and did all of that. And so the material wasn't received. I didn't get it for Friday night. And right. once I knew it was going to be that way, I asked it to come to my home instead of being wherever it would be between Friday yeah. and Monday. Yeah. I just feel like it, I, I, it, I, I just sort of cut short to <laughs> go with it. Yeah, and say, yeah. here's my top two or three. I, I'd like to push that maybe back to like the following Tuesday to whatever process we're looking at submitting those names in. Um, because I, I've, I've sort of taken a look at the list. I, I talked to Mr. Qualls and, and have done a little bit of research, but until I've gotten the references, I really don't know who to call it. And, 